Good evening, I'm Jamie McCutcheon. The Omaha police are asking for our help in finding a bank robber. November is a prime time to kick the habit. It's when the American Cancer Society launches the Great American Smokeout. And Papillion residents are putting down their water hoses this weekend. It's not by choice, it's the law. Think of your gas pedal as the trigger on a water gun. Every time you step on it, you're sending a stream of gas into your engine. AAA reports when Halloween falls on a Friday, fatal car crashes increase by 30%. I think a lot of us are wondering, can it get any colder than this? I know it can, but we got so used to the 60s and the 70s I that know. we're all in shock. Yep. Squeezed himself inside that microwave, which was about this size inside. Pictures and police reports put it at 10 inches high, 15 and a half inches wide, and 12 inches deep. You can still see that the flood water is running through this parking lot of a car dealership. Come 4th of July, we're going to see these sparklers and hear the pops of firecrackers. The rescue workers in Haiti are frantically trying to free students buried in the rubble of a school building collapse. Well, I guess that's one thing we can be thankful for about yeah. our lack of rain is we won't see any could use, of that. Yes. Could use a little bit though. Oh, not long after rush hour this evening, we pulled out our speed zapper once again and found some people to be going the speed limit, but many others to be going well beyond it. It must be at least 10 feet away from the building, and this is 10 feet right about here. It certainly was a good day to stay inside and watch the Huskers on pay-per-view. That is, if you don't like the freezing weather. You can even see where the snow was washed away by the water as it flowed into this intersection, and that left a mess for drivers. That is a beautiful score, isn't it? So far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> Being optimistic there, Dave. The Westmans decided almost 30 years ago that they had something to offer foster kids. But what makes them so unique is that they take the children who need a lot of extra care. Okay, there you go. Ready? <laughs> children and laughter were both in abundance at the Westman home. We started taking in foster kids when my oldest son, who is now 31, was three years old. We've done it in Texas, California and Nebraska. <laughs> In that time, the Westmans have helped about 100 foster kids. As if that wasn't enough, though, 13 years ago, a new challenge and a bigger way to help. We started taking sick children with Shantae. She was our first real sick one. I wasn't very healthy because I was like, not thinking to myself, oh, no, I'm going to die. I want to live. I want to live. So God helped me live, and I would thank him to make me free from all my tubings. It started with Shantae, but soon grew to others, like five-year-old Tori and three-year-old Jay. All kids that not just any foster parents would take. Tori got a liver, a bowel, and a pancreas. Jay just got a liver, um, and Tor Shantae got the whole enchilada. She got a liver, a bowel, a pancreas, and two kidneys. Between the three of them, nine organs transplanted. We have you know, ostomy changes and formula, lots of medicines. And if you've noticed, Kathy's husband, Ron, is missing from the picture. One of our kids needed a bone marrow transplant, and so Ron took him and then his younger brother, who's going to be the donor, to Seattle. And if you're asking why, why all this, why so much, you're not alone. Some days you feel like you must be a nutcase to do it because, you know, I should be at the age where, you know, we're going on cruises. Instead, there's snack times and messes and a lot of work. I just get so much more out of it than what I put in. It's, there's just no doubt about it. They're, they're, it's just so much fun to see them make progress. Progress of the body and of the heart. Because I love you very much. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. And Ron Westman will be in Seattle until the end of the year with the bone marrow transplant child. So John and Tracy, Kathy is playing single parent to five foster kids right now, and three of them have medical needs. Well, the Westmans are a great blessing, aren't they? They really are. Good evening. I'm Jamie McCutcheon. Thank you for joining us. Two weeks ago tonight, a house fire devastated two families who lived there. 50-year-old Emiliano Gomez died from burns he received while trying to save his two small children. Tonight, the Omaha community gathered to try and help his family pick up those pieces. Jody Baker continues our coverage. Jamie. Well, Jody, after this fundraiser, what if people still want to donate? Well, there are still ways they can do that. Now, the Elva Gomez Charitable Fund. Jamie. All right. Thanks a lot, Jody. There's also another Heartland family in need of some help. 22-year-old Luis Fernando Silva was shot and killed while sitting in his car on November 12th 
in his driveway. He was one of the three people shot on that Wednesday night. The shootings police say are connected. Silva worked two jobs to send money back to his mother in Mexico. One of those jobs was a Kona grill. There is a fundraiser for his family there tomorrow night from 4 to 7 p.m. Half the restaurant's proceeds will be donated. A crash in Bellevue sends five people to the hospital tonight, one in critical condition. It happened just after 7.30 at Corn Husker and Fort Crook Roads. Police tell us this white car that you see there was northbound on Fort Crook when it hit a red Dodge Durango. The Durango flipped on its side, ejecting someone from inside of it. That person was pinned underneath the SUV. In all, one person was critically injured and four others have less severe injuries. Investigators don't yet know which driver caused that crash. Omaha police are called to an assault tonight, which turns out to be a shooting. It happened around 7.30 at 24th and Himball. Police found a male victim inside a home there who had been shot. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. No word yet on his identity and no arrests have been made. All right, time now for a first check of our weekend weather. Let's go to right now to meteorologist Andrea Rich, who's standing here with me. And according to what we saw today, a lot better than what we saw yesterday. Yes, it's easier to tolerate a day that's not windy and bitterly mm -hmm. cold. Thank you, Andrea. From the Channel6News.com Center, new on the net tonight, the NBC affiliate in Seattle, Washington, is reporting one person has died, another injured after a mall shooting. Listen as an employee describes that scene. I was ringing up a customer. Police say two young men in their 20s were shot around 4 o'clock at the South Center Mall. That's outside of Seattle. Witnesses say the gunman fired several shots. The victims were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Again, one has since died. Police are still looking for that shooter. I'm told by city crews that yesterday there was a fire hydrant right here. City crews turned it on around 4 o'clock for one of those fire hydrant parties that happened most weekdays this time of year. But it was turning this hydrant off that led to this gigantic hole caused by a water main break, and it caused a big mess for some neighbors. <laughs> On a scorching summer day, relief is found in a lot of water from an Omaha fire hydrant. But a hydrant party Tuesday, similar to this one, left a lot of water and other stuff behind at 50th and U Streets. That's anything but relief for some homeowners. It came out of the toilet in there and the floor drain. It was bubbling up and just kept coming up and gushed. It started out as a little puddle, which they thought maybe the kids spilled something on the floor, and then it just gushed through and took over the entire basement. A brown sludge of water, mud, and raw sewage covered the floor of this space that's not just a basement, but a home to Lawrence's daughter and her family. And now my daughter and the kids don't have a place to sleep. It was very, very bad. I basically lost it. Next door to Lawrence, much of the same being cleaned up. A contaminated mess which entered the same way up toilets, sinks, and drains. In all, at least three homes hit by the sewer backup. A backup caused when an MUD water main broke. MUD tells us the cause was that fire hydrant being closed too quickly, and the water then went down the sewer line. The City Public Works Department confirms the break and backup did happen after that hydrant party. No matter the cause, Sandy Lawrence just wants to see this mess cleaned up and paid for. I think people should be more compassionate and help those in need when there's a problem like this instead of turning us away and passing the buck saying it's your fault, it's your fault, we're not going to do anything. Now MUD did send a representative out here to these homes last night, but since it appears that the break is not their fault, they're telling homeowners to file a claim against the city of Omaha. MUD is also filing a claim against the city for eight to nine thousand dollars. The company had crews out here until two this morning to fix this break. Reporting live from 50th and U, Jamie McCutcheon, Channel 6 News.